Hi, you're watching Alex Lab channel. This is the third part of the season about composite materials and today we will explore the basic technology of carbon fiber parts production. You will see how to model a complex shape for laminating in Blender, print it on a 3D printer, laminate a part out of carbon fiber according to the model and process it for the best effect. All books, PDF guides, drawings and 3D models are available for channel members, so let's begin! In the last video, using the example of an armor plate for protective motorcycle equipment, we figure out how to make a piece of fiberglass in a simple 3D printed shape. The composite was laminated on the outside of a simple cursed piece. However, in a large part of your composite projects, such as the case of remote control models or a motorcycle helmet, the surface has higher detail, sharp edges, sharp bends, much higher requirements for the ratio of weight and strength, and most importantly, laminating is done along the inner surface of the concave shape. So, today I want to show you how to make the carbon part of more complex geometry on the example of the Iron Man mask. If you haven't seen the previous part, then please start with it for a better understanding of the technology. I modeled the armor plate for the equipment in AutoCAD, because all dimensions and bending radius were known from the drawings. To model details such as elements of the costume, human body, body parts of machines, aerodynamic surfaces and other parts with complex geometry without precisely specified dimensions, I use Blender because in it and similar 3D editors like 3D Max and ZBrush we have handy tools for sculpting and modeling from images. Until now molds for laminating a composite parts are most often made by hand. Imagine how costly it is in terms of time and materials especially if the item is needed in a single copy, but if you have 3D modeling skills and you have the original mesh of the desired part, you can immediately print the mold on a 3D printer, saving tens of hours and kilos of materials. Regardless of the editor you're using, the technique for modeling a cast on the original is almost the same. Select the desired part and go to the vertex editing mode. If the part is modeled for the 3D printing, then first we remove the inner wall, leaving only the front side. Then select all vertices of the perimeter and extrude them in the direction of the front side. Adding supporting loops where needed and after that we align the new edges in one line. Then fill the holes with planes and get a ready-made form for laminating. Positioning the form in a slicer program, set the settings and send the file to print. PTG is the best material for such molds. It is strong enough to withstand the stress of part and mold separation and at the same time flexible enough not to crack during the process. If PTG is not available, then PLA can be used, but do not use ABS plastic because the mold will break while separating. Before printing the original part, I recommend printing small samples to make sure that the print settings and 3D modelings are made without errors. At the end of printing, we get the exact shape which can be used almost immediately for laminating, having already saved dozens of hours on handmade parts. With a narrow utility knife and sandpaper 400, remove minor print defects, paying more attention to sharp edges and angles. When the shape is polished, apply a separating layer on the inside. It can be hard wax for molds or spray wax, the main thing is to make sure that you release wax suitable for plastic molds and epoxy pouring. In order not to spoil the necessary details, I recommend doing some tests. When the form is completely ready for laminating, we prepare the fabric. Different types of carbon fibers are used for different parts. The number 3K, 6K and 12K in the name indicate the number of carbon threads in each beam. The higher the number, the thicker the fiber. For small parts with complex profiles and steep corners, it is better to choose a thinner fiber with a lower density, that is, choose 3K and density, for example, 210 grams per square meter. Also, fabrics differ in type of weaving. The most popular is the plain, that is usual grid with weaving through one thread, and twill 2 and 2, where each fiber passes through two fibers. 
Twill 2 and 2 is lighter than plain in except complex shape geometry due to greater elasticity since it has fewer weaves for the same area. Therefore, for small parts with complex geometry like ours, the best to use carbon fabric marked 3K Twill 2 and 2 210 grams per square meter. The main advantages of the carbon parts, this is a huge strength and rigidity with a minimum thickness and weight, and the disadvantages can only be attributed to the high price, which involves manual fabrication at many stages of production. The second component on which the quality of the part greatly depends is epoxy resin. Epoxy resin can be structural and decorative. Structural ones are cheaper, thick line honey in texture, more or less but turn yellow over time. It is used for interlayer lamination of composites, powering tables, manufacturing and repairing yachts, and other large-scale projects. Decorative compositions are more expensive, don't turn yellow and have good UV protection, usually they are more liquid when applied, less bubbling when solidified, and usually used for decorative purposes and form a more even outer layer. I recommend always testing unfamiliar compounds before using on the part itself, to do this, just make a test fill in a shape, test coating and make notes on all the properties of the composition. Note the density when mixing and applying, the quality of the coating, the number of bubbles, sagging and possibility of grinding. Do not buy a large stock of epoxy and especially hardeners. They have a rather short shelf life of only a couple of years. It is better to order fresh resin for a specific project. With a paper template and form, determine the dimensions of carbon sheets and cut the required amount with a margin of a couple of centimeters on each side. You can mark the fabric across the roll with a white marker. Long lines along the roll are more convenient and more accurate to do just pulling out one fiber, then cut the line exactly coincides with the weaving lines. Weight all sheets of fabric and then mix epoxy resin and hardener of the same weight. A kilogram of epoxy per kilogram of cloth, this is a general rule for most composite parts. Remember that it's better to mix the composition in two jars, since resin without hardener often remains on the walls of the first jar. Evenly distribute the composition in a thin layer, paying special attention to corners and sharp edges. Check the shape in good side lightning to there were no uncoated areas on the surface. Carefully lay the first layer in the form pressing on the cloth from the center to the edges, especially careful laying the corners, because these are the places where air likes to collect. It is better to do movements with hand and brush, not smoothing, but pressing down so as not to shift the fibers. When the first layer is fully impregnated with the resin and laid as tightly as possible, apply a thin layer of resin and repeat all the same with the rest of the carbon sheets. For higher quality and dense lamination, the part can be laminated under vacuum or pressurized sandbags, but this time I initially didn't use them so as not to complicate the technology. After complete polymerization but before demolding, outline the edges of the part with a white marker. With the help of plastic parts, we take out the part from the mold and evaluate the result of the work. This time the coverage is uneven because I couldn't get the twill and had to use plain, and this weave is more difficult to accept high detailed geometry. It is also better to choose a better quality release agent because in this case the wax worked badly. In any case, such defects can be corrected with further processing, but it is better to aim for a good surface quality immediately after extraction. Cut off excess material along the lines with a small margin. If the edges are glued well, then they will not diverge. Also, with a machine and a small cutting disc, cut out all necessary holes. Using 400 grit sandpaper, we level the surface removing excess resin, but without damaging the carbon. Evenly process the part using grinders at low speed and manual grinding. In the 3D modeling to build the correct geometry of the objects, such concept as phase flow is used. Phase flow is an interesting combination of strict mathematical logic of topology with the art of seeing the model's key reference lines. 
It consists in that each surface of the part is not built from a random grid, but from a directed flow of planes, which makes it easier to create and edit a mesh object without adding extra vertices. Well done flows form a continuous and easily editable sequence of surfaces separated by sharp edges that define the key lines. Returning to the sandpaper leveling of the part, it is important to see and take into account these flows in every detail, direct the movements of the bar in accordance with the directions of the flows, smoothing and leveling continuous plane, and highlighting sharp edges. After leveling the part with 400 sandpaper, carefully remove the dust and water. If water enters the final layer of resin, it forms white stains inside the layer. Now apply a finishing layer of structural or decorative resin. Ideally to find relatively such a composition, which is subject to polishing to a glossy sheen and doesn't become cloudy. After polymerization and a set of full hardness of the finishing layer, which sometimes takes up to 3 days, we proceed to wet grinding. First we proceed the part with 800 sandpaper and then with the grain from 1000 to 2000. Each subsequent paper knocks down the risk from the previous one, making the surface even smoother. It is better to avoid circular movements with abrasive and grind the part in cross straight lines, since circular risks are more difficult to kill with finer grain. Paper is best wrapped around a sponge or soft bar and wash the part with soap water before each change of abrasive to a finer grid. Otherwise, the previous abrasive will leave scratches. After finishing grinding, we proceed to polishing the surface. To do this, use a soft microfiber cloth, foam rubber and polish paste. It is better not to polish the part with green polishing paste for metal unless you make the green goblin suit. Green paste are clutched into the micropores of the coating and the surface will give off green in bright light. For coatings of different hardness, you need to choose your own polish. Epoxy is well suited for polishing paste and disc for car polish. Pay attention to the details in the frame, because even though the third one turned out to be nice, here are the selection of technological errors. Two smooth corners because long time I couldn't get wheel and I used plane. Too thick epoxy didn't fill all areas, therefore noticeable craters remained. The release wax has probably not set, mixed with the first layer of epoxy and made it impossible to apply finish coat due to poor adhesion even after sanding. To say nothing about grinding with two coarse sandpaper, resin overheating, holes in the fiber, polishing with the wrong composition, but in the end we still get nice part. As they always say in Bad News Evening Show, we show this nightmare so this doesn't happen to you. Now you know all mistakes that can occur and your very first detail has every chance of being perfect. Now a few thoughts about the further development of this technology. The good news is that with this technology of 3D modeling and 3D printing, we have now become available to almost everyone, possible at incredible speed print ready-made molds and make composite parts from them using just 5 tools. Never in the history of technology could one even dream of about such a quick embodiment of the idea in the material. Huge variety of light and strong body parts, which need to be created individually or in small batches, can be quickly made using a 3D printer and composites. But beside the advantages, this method has two fundamental problems, which are directly related to the mold itself and the need to take the part out of it. First, let's take the project of an anatomical protective suit made as an example. It has more than 50 different elements, it turns out for this you need to print 50 different molds that can be used only one time for one part and then thrown away, so Greta Thunberg would go crazy. Secondly, and most importantly, Laminating technology in shape will always steal part of the detail due to separating layer and due to the fact that carbon, kevlar and any other composite has a minimum bending radius, which will not allow the cloth to repeat the steep corners of the mold. This is not critical for streamlined parts, but noticeable if you need to get sharp corners. Also, the very fact that the part must be taken out of the mold imposes restrictions on the geometry. Therefore, in one of the following videos, I will try to solve this problem, make the same part, but without a mold, which theoretically will bring out the technology of 3D printing and composite materials to an even higher level and will allow the production of parts even faster and without loss in quality. 
Please ask your questions in the comments and look for the answers in my pinned comment under this video. Thank you for watching and many thanks to Alex Lab channel members, because only thanks to you this channel exists. In the next two videos we will analyze in detail how to measure strength and hardness of composite parts using simple tools. See you in the next week and good luck with your own projects!